So for those of you who haven't um, met us before, haven't maybe seen the promo video or haven't spoken to them or Katrina hasn't spoken to them or seen us, my name's Emma Morell and I'm the Director of the Equine Management course here at Marcus Oldham College. And this is my trusty offside, Associate Lecturer Katrina Wood. Hi everyone. Um, Katrina's backstory is also quite good because she's also a graduate of Marcus. So we thought it'd be a nice idea that you could actually also hear the side of what it was like when Katrina was actually um, a student as well. So what we thought we'd do is just do a general introduction about what the course is like, because obviously with COVID at the moment, it's been a bit hard um, having people in and coming down, but we're still running, we're still going, we're full steam ahead with everything. So we thought it might be a nice idea to get everyone together, um, have a general overview, and then you guys at the end can ask some questions. And no doubt a question you ask will be something someone else wants to know. So don't worry about what you ask. Don't think it's a stupid question because often you'll ask something that someone else hadn't actually thought about. Um, and then they're really glad that you asked. And it's, you know, we want you to be an interactive, engaged as well in what we're doing. So it's not just us talking at you. So what we'll probably do is just start with a general overview of what we do. So the college um, is basically an equine um, the course that we do is the equine management course, but the college itself is a business management college. So we do agriculture, agribusiness and the equine management. And it's been running since 1962 as um, Marcus Oldham. And then the equine course has actually been running since 1979. And it was affectionately known as the horse course as well. If you hear people talk about that, if you speak to any graduates. So we have been in the industry um, supplying graduates for a long, long time. I would say the best way to describe the course is sort of in thirds. Um, so the business management side is obviously really important because that's what we mainly do. So we look at the small business enterprise, we look at you know tax, we look at cash book, so using zero and myob and those sort of programs, helping you do gross margins. So understanding how to run your own business, maybe start up your own business, because a lot of our graduates, that is actually what, what they're wanting to do but it also gives you the other skills that you can go into another side of the equine business. So we're helping other people in that business area as well. So that's about a third of what we do. And part of that is a case study that we look at. So we actually look at up and running businesses, how they're working, what's successful. We find it really important that we have a lot of real world input. So it's not just us, you know, talking heads, but we have industry come in and show us what they're doing, what mistakes they've made, what they wish they'd done better, what they wish they'd known, what's working really well for them and what's at the cutting edge as well. Then the other third, I suppose, would be the equine science side. So that covers your breeding, exercise, physiology, nutrition, um, and the vet lectures. So we're very lucky. We have a fantastic relationship with Ballarat Vet Practice, um, who are about an hour and a half from here. And they've been lecturing on the equine course since 1979. Um, so it's a pretty long relationship. And you get very intense lectures in the, in the vet lectures, um, all about um, what you need to know in your day-to-day -day horse care. So it, it, there is a scientific background, but it's really so that you guys know how to manage and understand your own horse, but also horses for clients or horses for people you're working for. Because obviously vet bill is one of the big things that um, is a cost in a business and for a personal level as well, <laughs> as we all know, um, particularly on a Sunday, they seem to want to do that. Mm -hmm. So if you've got that background and understanding where you know if you need to call a vet out or you can treat something yourself and you have that understanding of what's going on, it makes you a really valuable employee as well. Um, the connection we also have there means we've got a lot of um, case studies of what's going on. So as again, real life situations. The other side is the breeding side. Now the theory you do do at college, and then we also have a stud placement, which we'll talk about a bit later on, where the practical side of it is sort of um, put into action as well. And then the nutrition, you know, how to feed horses. So the two costs, I would say, you'd all probably know, vet bills and feed. So we try and teach you to feed in the most um, scientifically proven way. So to help with performance, but also to help with the economy, because that's obviously a big part of what, what we need to worry about, particularly when you're running a business for someone and you want to make sure you can have the least overheads as possible with the best outcome. Then the other third would be the practical side. So the main thing we look at, we're not obviously a riding school. The practical side covers a, a broad spectrum. It's not just riding. Riding is really important for those guys who want to ride and we encourage that. 
but the practical is really about getting you with good handling skills. So Katrina manages um, some of that side of it with a weaning that we do. So how many horses did we have in this year? Four. So we had the four mares and foals that came in. So the students were able to see that whole process from the mares and foals coming into the paddock, from the paddock together, working with the mares and the foals, and then slowly um, doing that weaning process, which was great. And then handling the foals, which the students always enjoy. They're very cute, I'm a bit biased, two of them are mine. <laughs> um, yeah, so we have that process. We also do yearling handling. So just more working with young horses, which will give you an idea of what happens when you go out into the industry and onto your stud placement, because young horses can be very, very different to your older horse that you've dealt with every day. Um, we also do young horse education or breaking in, um, lunging, what else do we do? Yeah, so breeding. there is a riding like component a, that you have to yeah. do that, that we cover, but the range of what we do um, we have people that are very experienced. We've had four-star event riders, Grand Prix dressage riders, and we have people maybe that have more of interest in the, um, not the practical side, but they want to get into the administration side, but they still need to do that. So we have a big range of what we do and we can offer and look after different people and their range of ability. So yeah, the horse handling is important because even if you're going to be in a practical side, like a lot of the guys that come, they want to be bloodstock agents, some um, you know, not necessarily seeing a horse every day, but you've got to have walked the walk a little bit before you can talk the talk. And that's what's really important. And a lot of our students, what they need after us is they'll go and get the experience out there in the field. So the, the young horse and the, and the yearling handling is really important. As Katrina said, they can be very different. So we try and teach you in a way that's, that's ethical for the animal, but also really safe is what we're, our main concern is. Um, then the other practical is the prac placement that we do. And again, Katrina looks after that. And the prac placement is something we think is really, really important. The periods that we do, which Katrina can touch on a bit, uh, are quite long periods because we think it's very important that you see a, a spectrum of a business, that you see a bit of a cycle, that you're not just there for two weeks as the work experience person, but you actually get in. And that you can actually go somewhere that you really want to go. And that might be overseas as well. But that work experience is really important because it is how you make contacts. And in the equine industry, a lot of, um, you know, getting forward somewhere is who you know and being able to get your foot in the door. And we're very lucky because Marcus students, they are desirable in the industry and we have a lot of graduates out there. And we're really lucky because people want our students and they really want to help you. They want the next generation to come through. So they're very willing where they can to take people on where maybe the door wouldn't be open for everyone. So we've got some amazing supporters out there in industry, um, whether they be graduates or just they've had fantastic graduates work for them as well. So a little bit about the prac placement. Katrina, you might want to touch on the, the first placement first. Sure, yeah. So the first placement is for eight weeks and that can be, as Emma mentioned, in any area of the horse industry that you like. So. You know, you might be a passionate brainer or camp drafter or love polo or something. So we really encourage you to go for your hero and, you know, just work towards the absolute ultimate within that, within your sphere of interest. Um, so that's an eight week time frame. Um, so just to give you some examples, so I've got a few that have been overseas recently. So We've had students go over to Chris Burton in the UK. And I got to visit them. It was so exciting. I was thrilled. So if you yeah. want to go overseas, go overseas because we get to visit you. Really, yeah. We really enjoy that. Or, you know, warm tropical destinations yeah. is also, are also encouraged. Um, Oliver Townend, who's also in the UK. I saw um, him too. And then in America, which we didn't get to go to. Though. No, we, we didn't. know. we have to work on that one. Um, Boyd Martin and the Boston Polo Club. So we had couple of students were right into their polo and they had an amazing time they got to play as well as work so they were thrilled um and then more locally so that's for the equestrian side of things we've had students go to megan jones eventing in south australia there's one student there now actually um russell johnson if you're into show jumping he's and if you watched any of that off the track he actually was pretty successful in that recent channel seven off the track yes um and then for the racing side of things we've also got a great um list of contacts and relationships. So we've had students go to Lindsay Park, there's one there now, Chris Waller Racing, um, Godolphin, so both their racing and breeding side of the operation, which is great, and they're in um, two different states and overseas, so there's lots of options there. 
Magic Millions, the bloodstock auction company, as well as Inglis, Aquis Farm, who are in Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. So that's lots of options there. And then in the bloodstock and the, you know, perhaps not as hands on mm. side of things, we've also had students go to racing.com with an interest in media and journalism and Sky Racing as well for the production side of things and OTI Racing. So that's more syndication, pedigrees, analysing bloodstock, looking at different factors of racing across the world. So lots and lots of different options there. Um, and you can see by the people that they've gone to, like there are some big names and that's what's really exciting. You, you can get yourself known. And the best thing about the placement, if you choose a really good placement, it helps you sort of clarify what it is you wanna do. But a lot of our students, when they've done a good job, that's where they end up going. You yeah. know, there's an opportunity of employment because you've, you've proven yourself, they've got to know you. It's almost like you've done a bit of a, a three month trial period almost. And that's the reason we give you that big window to do it in. Because actually it's eight weeks you must do minimum, but there is a, an availability of 10 weeks. And a lot of our students who are really keen can do extra work placement. If they go overseas, it does give them that time. And the thing about going overseas, it's quite a good time and then it means you can hit the ground running once you come back here. Or a lot of our students have gone back overseas to work for those people with, with the right visas. And it really opens your eyes to what's out there. And that's what I think the best thing about Marcus is. We sort of say, I once had a graduate say to me, Marcus um, showed me the door and opened it for me and then I had to walk through. And we find that a lot of people know a bit about what they're doing in the industry, but they don't actually realise how big it is, how global it is. Particularly in America and the UK, it is huge. I mean, in Australia, it's, you know, one of the biggest employers across, you know, with racing and equestrian. We're getting much more professional. Uh, within America, it's worth $20 billion to the economy. Within the UK, it's like three billion pounds. Like, it's a big international industry. And it's one of those things where it's a skill that you have. And once you have a skill, you're really employable anywhere in the world. Yeah, students find it life-changing. Really. Yeah, yeah, for a lot of them. Uh, it, it's, it's because you didn't realise what was, what was out there. Mm -hmm. So that's the first placement, and that is something that you would want to start thinking about. So we like our students to actually, you find the placement. We have a database, we have connections, we have the graduates, we have all of that. But we really want you to be the master of your own ship, really, so that you take control and you're excited by it. I mean, we're excited by it, but we want you to be really excited by it. Um, so if you can start thinking about where it is you might want to go, what area, we can help you with that as well and guide you to the best places. But as Katrina said, like, go to your idols. Uh, you know, I, yeah, I, I still yeah. have idols and I want to visit <laughs> them and see them and be taught by them and do that. So that's what we want to say, you know, dream big. And that's hopefully where Mar Marcus can help you a little bit by dreaming big. The second placement that we do, we might touch on now, it's more to do with the breeding. And... Um, that is in September, obviously, when the stud season starts. And that placement is a four-week placement. Yep. And so that needs to be in the Southern Hemisphere. We do think worldly, but for the sake of practicality in the Southern Hemisphere, at least all thoroughbred studs are on the same timeline as far as breeding goes. So you've got um, stallions serving mares, foals being born, mares being vetted to check they're ready and cycling correctly and all that sort of thing. So we say Australia or New Zealand for that stud placement. And within that, you are spoiled for choice because um, we have such amazing studs both here in Victoria, the Hunter Valley and New Zealand. I mean, I can reel off some names. So in Australia, we've got the likes of Arrowfield, Coolmore, Vinery, Woodside Park. So all, you know, that stand all the top stallions in Australia. And then in New Zealand, I mean, you take your pick, but we've been to Westbury, Rich Hill, Little Avondale, the Oaks, you know, all of the, the top studs in the southern hemisphere we have a good relationship with and they're keen to take you on they're keen to help you learn and then possibly offer you a job in tip the yearling sales for the following year you know the because it actually in ties in quite nicely you do your stud yeah. placement and then when the college year ends a lot of our students who direct money can go into a yearling prep or something because mm -hmm. it's the timing so that actually works out quite nicely that you can um ease into that once you've made those contacts and again i think for a lot of our students it's another life-changing placement because a lot yes. of people haven't had the stud Never experience. with mares and foals before and then all of a sudden something's lit within them. Oh my gosh, this is me. This is what I want to do. And that's so. what we want to do. We want to have that fire in your belly that we help you find that path. 
I love my job. I love what I do. Every morning I get up and I spring out of bed because I love working in this industry. And that's what we want to try and light within you, I suppose. And that can be in so many different areas. As I said, often people come in with the blinkers and then they realise how big the industry is and the blinkers can come off and there's so much choice. I mean, I, Katrina probably never thought she'd be working here back at Marcus Oldham College. She had quite a roundabout way of getting here. Do you want to talk a bit about maybe your career path after Marcus? Sure, yeah. So I did the equine course in 2006, which, my God, 14 years ago. Um, and I came in thinking that I wanted to work in pre-training of all things, which, you know, I still find interesting. But once I got in here and... You know, as Emma mentioned, the blinkers came off and I was, you know, a bit of a kid in a candy <laughs> shop about all the different options. So I actually ended up going more towards the breeding side of the industry and working in admin, which was really great, great way to learn about so many different other aspects into a business. So the pedigree side of things, how the business side of a stud operates, you know, trying to recruit stallions and then attract the right mares. That was all fascinating. Um, so I worked at studs in Australia and New Zealand, straight out of Marcus pretty much. And I worked in the breeding and racing industry for 10 years as soon as I left. And all of those jobs, you know, I was able to open the door by saying I went to Marcus Oldham and there's pretty much always someone there that already works there that has been to Marcus, which is a great foot in the door. Uh, yeah, so then I came back from New Zealand and worked in Australia in racing admin and on the ground and in yearling sales and things like that. So, and then we and then, you know, serendipitously ended up back here. Yeah, we dragged her back. I'm the other reason Emma gets out of bed. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, like, I've got to stick a tree today. today. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing actually, we probably do need to touch on with the work placement for the stud, just to clarify, it does have to be the thoroughbred stud. And the only reason that is, is because of the, t the timing. So within, as most of you probably know, within the stud industry, horse birthday, 1st of August, very important date, very important that they want horses born as close to that date. So when you're out on work experience, those thoroughbred studs are the busiest. Performance horses can be a little bit more fluid in when they breed. The other thing is that the numbers you'll be seeing, like a lot of these studs are having 300 to 400 mares. So you're going to see foals on the ground. So that's the only reason we say thoroughbred is so that you'll, you know, a horse being born is a horse being born. The, the complications are the same. The procedure is the same. The vetting, the pre-vetting, all of that's the same. The other thing you do get to see, though, are also live sirs, which is also quite interesting, yeah. and, the, and the stallion handling side of it. And the number of stallions most of these studs have as well, not just one. They've normally, normally got multiple stallions. So that's why we say that, just so that you get a pretty intense experience within that short window of time, basically. Um, the next thing to probably touch on would be the tours that we um, go on because that sort of does lead into the stud. I'll sort of go back to front. We'll start with the, the second tour that we do and that's where we um, go to New Zealand normally. So we have a two week tour of New Zealand, which is an amazing tour because New Zealand's very similar to Australia, yeah. but very different. They're very traditional what they do for such a small country. They produce a, an amazing number of Horses, elite level, elite level group one winning mm -hmm. horses. I mean, if you ever watch the Melbourne Cup, there's the basic thing. There's your New Zealand horses there. You know, a lot of international eventers. William Fox Pitt's got a number of New Zealand horses that are eventing at four star overseas. So they're, they're, they have a world platform. I mean, their own equestrian team for such a small country. Mm -hmm. You know, Mark Todd, Blythe Tate, you know, the Janelle Price. Uh, they're out there on the stage. So they're, they're an amazing country for such a small base. They also have grass that grows all year round, which is beautiful <laughs> to see. Like it literally, you, you watch it grow when we're on tour. Yeah. Um, and we see a range of industries over there. So we obviously look at the, the two main sides, which is the um, equestrian side and then the racing side. But we also look at the auxiliary industry. So we go to a, a feed mill, we go to a, a, an equine physio, we go to... Um, Saddleries. Yeah, Saddleries production. So yeah, yeah. where the businesses run, because remember, we've, we've got what we think. So I always think there's like a pyramid and, you know, the Olympics and the Melbourne Cup is the very top of the pyramid. There's a whole section in between that has to be filled, that the, the industry needs us to fill. And this is what we go and see, like, where can you fit into that? What is your passion for that? Because you don't have to be going to the Olympics. You know, that's great if that's what you want to do. 
but you know, 0.1% will probably get there. You've got need a lot of motivation, but there's a lot to get there before there. We can have a really rewarding career. And that's why we try and visit as many um, sort of supportive industries as well um, that, that are getting people there. So the New Zealand tour is two weeks and then it actually leads on to the stud placement. So hence, if you do want to stay in New Zealand for your stud placement, you can. And that means you're not having to pay an extra airfare because your airfare is covered by the college as part of your tuition. So you can stay on and do your four week stud placement there, or you can come home. The other two as we do, we do a lot of day trips as well. Because again, we think it's really important that you're out in the industry, that you know people know who you are, that when we turn up to these places, you're well-dressed, you're presented, you have some good questions to ask, you show some interest and motivation. They remember you. Mm -hmm. Who was that student that asked that really good question? What's mm -hmm. her name? What's his name? Yeah, so we try and get you out there, not only to show you what's out there, but to show potential employers, you know, these are the, this is the future that you'll be choosing from. We do a little mini tour around Victoria as well early in the year as part of a bonding and also um, just to show some local industries again. And that's sort of for three or four days where we go to the, the sales. So it's around March, the English um, sales. And then we head to up morning to Peninsula or up Shepherd. And it depends what group we... We'll often try and tailor what we do a little bit to what the group interest is. Like. Yep. Um, you know, if there's a lot of events or a lot of show jumps or dressage riders or bloodstock or, you know, pre-trainers, we'll try and, you know, maybe focus our visits a little bit more so you get the contacts and you, you get to see what they do. Um, and then the day tours tend to be split. We can either do clinics. So if you're doing the equestrian elective and you want to ride, we'll often run clinics. So we have um, national, international clinicians coming in. So we have Blythe Tate, we've had Lucinda Green. We have a local Victorian ones, Will Enzinger, Yona Lloyd. We've had Gita Donvig, Mary Hanna come in, um, Justin Greer, the dressage people, Russell Johnson, Jamie Coman for the show jumpers. So Again, we try and tailor what we do. We've also had polo days where we've gone out. We're in quite a good area here. We've got um, red gum polo down the road. We've got um, Baker's Bridge just down the road as well. So there's a lot of different contacts. The great thing for us in Victoria, and a lot of people from Queensland and WA sort of can't get their head around this. Yeah. Within we're two hours, <laughs> we're pretty much everywhere. Yeah. Like two hours direction from anywhere, the equine industry is, is pretty... Um, confined in Victoria, where I know you guys from WA and Queensland, you know, two hours is like down the end of your driveway practically. <laughs> so the competition side, for those of you that the equestrians are interested in, we do encourage you to compete, although we're not a riding school and the riding is only a small part of the actual course. We, you are, you can ride anytime, you can have your own instructors in, you can have your own clinicians in, that's absolutely fine. Um, and we encourage you to compete. We want you to get out there. Maybe try something you haven't tried before or that you're on a path of where you want to go and you need to compete. We support that. So we will cover um, up to sort of two competitions per trimester. Um, obviously, you've got to do your college work as well. So you've got to have a bit of a balance. But, you know, that's having horses. You know, I've got five horses that I compete. You've got to balance your work and your, your hobby and your passion with that. And hopefully we teach you some time management skill as well <laughs> when you're here. Um, so that side's really important for the racing guys. You can get as involved as you like in the industry. We have a lot of supporters at, at the track, um, trainers coming in. Yeah, so both at the Geelong race course and down along the coast. There's a lot of trainers working down there these days with access to the beach. So we've got lots of options there for day visits. We also head up to the races. So it usually, in, um, you know, I managed to time it so it works in nicely with the spring racing carnival. I went to Oaks Day last year. We've been to Seymour Racing Club, which we go most years and do behind the scenes with the stewards and the jockeys. Um, yeah, we've got lots of options there. And once again, I just sort of ask the group halfway through the year and say, what are your main interests? And is there, have you got anyone that you would be completely starstruck to visit? Let's go and do that. Um, yeah, and we just sort of work with the group. And that side of it, again, you know, they're, they're, they're the fun days as well, because you are in the class. Like at Marcus, we're not like other universities where it's a couple of hours. You do get a lot of contact hours in your year. Like you're in mm -hmm. class nine to four every day. That might involve a practical component. So, you know, when the breaking's on, there's four hours of practical a day for a couple, you know, four weeks. But it's it's a pretty intense course. And I always say, if you're not exhausted by the end of this year, you haven't put in enough. Like we want you to come and do whatever you can. If you want us to help you, we will help you do the most. If you just want to pass and cruise along, that's fine. But hopefully you're here to do more than that. 
So if you want to work maybe on weekends and do some volunteer work at a, at a local stable or for someone, we encourage you to do it. The more you want to ride, the more you want to compete, we are here to help you do that. Yeah, so if you can put in 110%, you'll get that out. And I think, you know, it's a pretty short year, really. I mean, February to oh, yeah. sort of December. And it goes fast. Everyone mm. is traumatised at the end of the year because they don't <laughs> want to leave. They can't believe it's happened so quickly. Um, obviously, you know, with your workplace and your campus. Because that's the other part about Marcus. So we call it the Marcus family, which I know sounds a little bit like a cult or some strange <laughs> thing. But you do become part of an alumni in a group. We are relatively small. Like on campus, you know, there's like 100 roughly 140 rooms. So you do get to know everyone across all courses. And it's a very inclusive place in that way. So that's part of the whole experience as well, coming here and making those friends. A lot of our learning is done outside the classroom. You know, we learn from students what they've done, what their families have done, how they're running properties, what they've done with their work experience, what their trainer has said. So it's a very much sure sort of a give and take organic as well that, you know, you're learning just from, from lecturers, from guest visitors, from tours, but from each other's experience as well. And those connections and contacts that you make are really important. So I've touched a little bit on the living side of it. So we might move on to some facilities and we've got a few pictures we might actually show you of some of the facilities that we have here. So basically, you know, it's ideally you can live in, we'd hope, and you bring your horse. And having your horse here for the year, if you don't have your own horse, that's fine. We do have college horses for you to have a loan of. But um, if you've got your own horse, then um, we've got some pretty great facilities. So the first one coming up, so that should be screen shared now. I'm just double, check, double checking with our IT boffin here. Behind He's giving us a thumbs up. Yeah. Um, so these are what we call the McKinnon stables, the new stables. So you can see there, we've got the, the stables, we've got the undercover round yard. So that's where we do a lot of our uh, breaking in or um, students will also bring, maybe they've got young horses or they're a bit nervous of a horse. It's got a bit of a buck in it. I'm in there a lot on my <laughs> ex horses off the track. I tell you what, it's the best thing ever. Um, you can canter around hanging on, screaming. Um, <laughs> but the undercover round yard, so again, you can use it in, in all weathers. We've got the stables. In those stables, we've actually got um, six normal size stables and then three mare and foal boxes that we use for the, the mare and foal and the yearling handling. There's a tack room in there. Um, there's an equipment room. And then the next thing you'll see is the indoor arena. And again, this is just for student use. We don't hire it out. The only thing we do is if we run clinics, we will have maybe outside people to help us pay for those clinics. All the clinics that we run here, though, are part of your course, so you don't have to pay any additional for people like Blythe, Tafe, et cetera. So the indoor arena, we have a full set of show jumps um, for the indoor and outdoor arenas that you can use in between the two. We've got lights. You can ride in there 24 hours a day. If you're super motivated, you can ride before class, after class. Um, it's up to you. As I said, your own motivation is the only thing that will be stopping you. Um, outdoor sand arena. There's some of our show jumps you can see up there. And on the side there, you can see that's where the uh, uh, indoor arena is on the right. And then just behind those sort of silver tanks, there are fire tanks. You see a green building next to it. That's the other set of stables. Um, the, uh, what are they called? I, I just call them the old stables. McCann, McCann stables, yeah. that's it. So we've got them the old and the new. Yeah. Uh, and there's eight stables in there as well. And paddocks down the driveway. So when you have your horse here, it does depend on um, numbers of students we've got each year, it changes. Your horse may be in a shared paddock, it may be in a private paddock. You can have a stable, it's sort of first in best dressed. Often I find people wanna have a stable, they come in, they're all excited, but you have to have done your stables by quarter past seven in the morning, so before breakfast. So sometimes the sheen of that wears off when I'm down there yelling, you're going, why is the stable clean? But um, it's certainly up to you, that doesn't cost you any extra. Um, we have, as I said, smaller private paddocks, bigger shared paddocks. So we sort of just have to see what, what's going on. We're on 500 acres here and you can actually ride around the whole college. So as long, you know, as, long as you're in pairs and you don't ride over the farmer's crops or anything and making my rate, um, you've actually got a lot of riding, a lot of hill work. You can, I get my adventures pretty much fit off here. You don't have to take them off. But we also are 15 minutes from a, a beach where you can take horses as well. So we're pretty lucky where we are. We're 45 minutes from the National Equestrian um, Centre at Werribee, or the state, sorry, the State Equestrian Centre at Werribee. That's 45 minutes down the road. Bonio Park, the Mornington Peninsula, for those of you dressage people would know, that's two hours away. Flemington Caulfield, an hour and an hour. An hour. Um, yeah. Geelong, as we said, is very close. Ballarat's an hour and 10. So we're, we're pretty well located here. Um, Facilities-wise for your horse, 
we actually, all of this is part of your fees. So your fees will cover adjustment for one horse and hay. So all the grass, hay, the little thing can eat. Um, you just need to think about obviously your normal feed that you do and the farrier. We have farriers that will come on um, site. You can use your own farrier or you can use the college farrier. It's up to you. That's the only other cost you need to think of. If you do want to bring a second horse, you just need to make sure we've got room and we'll authorise that. And then that would be a $30 a week extra cost, which still covers all your hay. So it's it's a pretty good um, deal with, with what's covered. Um, you, we have a college float that you can use. So a lot of students might come down with their own car and float, which is great because often you'll buddy up with someone if you don't have your own. But if you've got a car but and not a float, then you can borrow the college two horse float. It's only about three years old, a stallion float. Or if you make friends with one of the ag boys, if they've got a big ute, they might tell you as well. That's always a good thing to do. So as I said, the competition side is as much or as little as you want to do. We encourage that side of it. Um, we might have a little chat then about post Marcus, um, I suppose. I think we've probably covered yeah, most of everything else, I think. Otherwise, you guys can ask some questions as we go along. But what some of our graduates have done. So um, I sort of ran through before how big the industry is, and that, that's the exciting thing. Australia, for again, relatively small player and a long way away, we produce a huge number of um, winners and gold medals and thoroughbreds on the racetrack. So we're, we're really big on the world stage. So some of our graduates in more recent years, I'll just run through this quickly just to give you a bit of an idea, because remember, it's up to you. We'll open the door, but you've got to be the one who motivates it. So this is about what your dream is. So here, um, Sam Chesnick at Spring Creek Equine down at, um, in the Yarra Valley, beautiful location there just near all the wineries. So her and her partner, um, Chris Height, some of you might've heard about them, have set up a fantastic little um, business. And they now do, so they do adjustment, they do lessons, they ride competitively themselves, they sell horses. Um, Sam is really good at marketing. If you go onto their website, there's a great little video. I won't play it now because I don't trust technology, but I encourage you if you want to maybe go onto the Spring Creek Equine. I have a bit of a speech slur there when I say that. Um, go on and have a look at what they do. They've got a fantastic video. She's really great at marketing. Obviously the skill that she learned here because we do do marketing at Marcus as well. Um, but they have a rehab center now that they've just opened up as well. So a lot of little sort of different enterprises to come in there. Uh, Steph Bender was actually in the same year as Katrina was. Yep. And she actually had a lovely horse mare there, Netsy, that she went four star on. She actually moved to Germany. She did speak fluent German, so she was lucky. So she went back to Germany and ran a big stable over there and evented. She's since come back to Australia and she's got a lovely, beautiful cracking mare from Germany over with her. So watch out for Steph. She's got a lovely little horse at the moment. She actually got the ride on Stuart Tinney's horse, Pluto Mio, when it semi-retired from sort of um, international competitions. So that's Pluto Mio there in the middle photo. And now she's um, Steph Bender Equestrian. She'd worked in a sort of alliance with Stuart Tinney. Now she's going out on her own and um, competing and coaching and doing all those things. And so watch out for her and her great little mare. Rachel Watts was um, a graduate again of ours who went on and worked for, and she is still working for Shane Rose. She's had a little bit of a break. She went overseas and worked for Chris Burton for a few years and did some amazing things, got to see some great things. She's been to the Olympics numerous times. She's been to Arkham, she's been to Badminton and Burley, all those great things as a professional groom. So there is a career out there for people that don't always want to ride within the equestrian side of things, particularly in Europe. You know, professional grooms over there are really highly valued. It's a really important job. You've got to keep the horse sound. You've got to keep it looking good. You've got to ice its legs all night. You've got to look after it throughout the year. You're the one when the rider's got so many horses. You're actually the one at the cold face there. And actually, Rachel, last year or the year before, I can't remember what year I'm in at the moment, um, actually won Groom of the Year from EA. So again, if you go into the EA website and Google Rachel, there's a nice little video of her um, talking about it. Although she hates being in front of the camera, Rachel. <laughs> she's one of those who likes to be behind, but she's incredible. So works with Shane. Um, he does a lot of pre-training as well. Really amazing business. We've actually got a student there at the moment working hard with him. Um, Emptyaz um, was an Olympian. Oh, he still is. He's, not, he's still alive. Um, <laughs> and he represented India at the Sydney Olympics. He was their first um, representative in eventing. And again, a great duck guy. He's worked overseas in America. He came back to Australia and worked here at NEGS for a little while. And now he's out um, competing and he's back in India at the moment. But someone else who really made it happen. He came here with not much and he made it happen and he went to the Olympics. Um, and again, a really enthusiastic, um, inspiring story because he just never gave up. And I think that's the key, never give up. Uh, Henry Dwyer, 
So, do you want to talk a bit about Henry then, maybe? Uh, yes. Well, I was bridesmaid in his wedding. Oh, you mean <laughs> something else? Oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, Henry is now a well, multiple Group 1 winning trainer. He was the year after me at college. And so, he's got stables in Caulfield, St. Leonard's and Ballarat. So, he's, yeah, he's going from strength to strength. He, um, yeah, the Ballarat stable is brand new, but the... The level that his horses are competing at keeps going up and up. He employs a lot of graduates yeah. as well, actually. Uh, mostly he's staff been, are Marcus yeah. graduates. Yeah, so that works well for everyone. And lecturers. He's actually yes. yard-headed. Um, St. Leonard's is a lecturer from here. So, uh, again, that's that idea of that Marcus family. There's these connections and people tend to stay very loyal to Marcus, you know, because they've had a good experience. The other options are we've had quite a few um, vets coming through. Um, who actually weren't sure what they wanted to do or maybe didn't get straight into their course. So um, th they come and do the year here. We do a lot of equine specific vet lectures. The, the vets here always say you do many more specific equine lectures than you do actually at vet school because you've got to do obviously every species under the sun. So um, I've got three names up there, but Rebecca McKenzie is also in New Zealand and that's where she really was... Um, got her passion for vets. She's actually on the Marcus website too. If you have a look under Marcus stories, Rebecca McKenzie with an A, R, A. Um, and we've got another student, Georgia Hackett, who's just started this year. So again, it's another pathway. Marcus just gives you the skills and the strength and the confidence, gives you the young horse handling. We do a lot of vet lectures here. So you do learn bandaging techniques, injecting, all of those sorts of things, as well as, as the theory. And again, the prac placement. So we, we had someone go over to Kentucky to work at a vet surgery, about our vet practice. Goulburn Valley, all of those people have taken students for those who might be interested. Uh, Ryan, so maybe Katrina wants to speak about Ryan. He was actually the same year, he was 2008 actually. Yeah, so yeah. year after Henry. Yeah, after Henry. Yeah. Uh, and Ryan's a real, he's also really Another go getter. Yeah. He just absolutely went for it. Off a $10,000 deposit, bought himself a property um, up sort of towards Bendigo Way. And now he is constantly doing large drafts at all the major yearling sales and doing really well. He's a sought after vendor, you know, buyers know that if they're buying a quality product from Ryan and yeah, he credits a lot of what he learned from the course in Marcus. Yeah, again, there's a little video about him on the website. Um, he, after he went to Marcus, he wanted to go overseas. So we helped him. We, we have something called the Landwades Award at the end of the year where people that have a particular interest in thoroughbred breeding mainly, get the chance to work overseas in um, at a stud. So um, Landwade Stud, which is this enormous stud that has um, in Suffolk, in Ireland, in Newmarket. Um, and he actually didn't win it that year. It was such a strong year. <laughs> um, someone else went over, but we sent him over um, with another company and he worked at Tween Hill Stud just in Gloucestershire there. And that really helped to have connections with some Middle Eastern investors as well. And that's it again. It's often who you know and the connections and that's what started out. You know, Ryan's a good worker, hard worker, smart man, and um, he knew how to use opportunities that we gave him. So, yeah, he's been a real success to us. Katrina said, $10,000 deposit. Don't let money stop you. Uh, Jess Blackwell, another interesting one. So she started her own business. So a lot of you might be interested in sort of the um, more alternative therapies there. So she's a Questry Care, so massage specialist. And again, she won Telstra Businesswoman of the Year about um, eight years ago. And she set her own business up there in WA, which is now nationwide so she runs a uh, equestry care as a, as, a, as a type of program you can buy the books you can buy the videos you can do it at home and she sets people up training so again she had a vision she wanted to get into this and now she is she's just so busy she's booked out so another one if you want to look her up ice vibe boots a lot of you might have heard about ice vibe boots and use them and other products that they've got as well the rugs in the uk particularly where they started louisa williams the inventor actually came to Marcus Oldham. And again, you know, the invention was her idea, the business skills that she got here, the marketing side really helped her get her sort of foot in the door and, and start this now as something that is, you know, standard Maybe in most stables yeah. um, with what they're doing. Uh, Laura Dixon. Yes, so Laura was also, she was a year before me. Um, now she runs this amazingly popular and successful rehabilitation centre in Ballarat, it's about two kilometres from the race course and the vet clinic. And people are scrambling to get their horses in there because she does such an amazing job of bringing them back to, you know, well, their best health, whether that's back to racing or back to whatever they were doing. So yeah, she's also a self-made girl. She just got a little business plan together and which we obviously taught her the skills and went on to 
make a real career for herself and it's still going strong. And a lot of the students actually, and Sam Chesney from Spring Creek was the same, uh, Laura, Ryan, we do something here called a case study where you actually do have to write a bit of a business plan and um, a bank proposal. So we do give you a bit of a mock skill in that, which really helps, I think, for those that want to do a business. Other thing with everyone we've spoken about too, all of them have taken students on work experience or employed yeah. Marcus graduates as well. So these are the great things. Wallaby Hill is another one. They have um, two graduates there who are just about to get married as well. So that's the other thing. You can often find a partner <laughs> at Marcus, it seems to be. Uh, Wallaby Hill, for those who don't know, it is the most spectacular equestrian business up in New South Wales. So Michelle works for Alex Townsend, who is the owner and manager of Wallaby Hill and Michelle is her sort of two IC. She events as well. She actually had worked for Shane Rose and won International Groom of the Year when she worked for Shane Rose. And then Will works on the side where they do a bit of breaking and pre-training um, of the thoroughbred. So again, industry is working in comparison. So Alex is an eventer and that's her passion, but she also runs a centre where people hire out, hire for shows. They do clinics there as well as run the Wallaby Hill um, three day event at the end of the year, but they do other things. So many different enterprises on the one, which is really interesting. Um, and again, Google it because it's spectacular, the photos. You and Kellett, so any of you in Victoria that have ever jumped a cross country fence have probably jumped a fence by you and Kellett. So he's a graduate that again was an eventer and had a bit of passion and thought, how can I turn my passion into something that's going to pay? And now he's worked um, alongside international people. He works at Adelaide, really does build most of the courses around Victoria. Um, yeah, really inspirational. And again, how do you set yourself up? You need a good business plan. You need a good vision. He's learnt a lot on the way as well. But he, again, always talks about his time here at Marcus Oldham. And again, is really good, very helpful graduates and students who want a bit of advice and help. Um, and yeah, has worked with some of the most amazing people internationally. He's very lucky. Monique Roche, um, another more recent graduate. And this is for those of you who think you've got to be 18 or 20 to come That's to right. Marcus. This year we actually have somebody who's 56 at Marcus because he wants a life change. We have students of all ages, okay? And it's never too late to want to change what you do and have a passion. And often it's the older ones that do a bit better because they're really focused and people want them. Mm. So do you want to speak about the, Monique? Yes. So Monique was actually high up with BHP. BHP, yeah. yeah. So, and she was working at the London Olympics and, you know, and all around overseas. Singapore and, Dublin, yeah. I think, as well. Yep. She loves Ireland, which was then reflected in her new husband. Um, so, yeah, Monique was just really thinking, this is great, I'm making a lot of money, but my passion is horses and I want to learn how to become a trainer or at least make that my life. I'm more after a lifestyle than this, all the money that, and no time to myself, basically. So she set up, bought her a little property just near the Ballarat race course and has set up with her husband, Thomas, and they're running a, a boutique but very successful racing stable there. I actually came across her. We worked together at a racing stable. So once again, I found out she was a Marcus graduate, got her into the job and yeah, we've had a good friendship ever since. So she is a great example and she is so happy. Look like at the photo. Sort of I mean, you can tell in the photo, yeah. this lifestyle change. Yeah. Um, so, you know, again, it's, it's never too late if you've got the motivation. Samantha Pritchard, just another one to show we've had international. So she's a Canadian, came here at a low level. Now she's got her own stable and eventing at um, three or four star back in Canada and runs that. Abby O'Brien came. So she came with Raj there. who was only a four year old, I think at the time. And now she's on the, on the pride squad with her two new horses. She um, worked at Wagner Saddlery, another side view, uh, the side step that she'd done to support herself. She's going great guns with two young horses that she's trained up. And you know, the Olympics is where she wants to be. Uh, Lewis Newton, another one, he came here as a preliminary dressage rider, had a horse called Angel, never competed, came from WA, now um, won the Arkan Challenge that we um, did sponsor in that year. Um, so within sort of six or seven years, he's now working at a boutique um, warm blood stud where he rides and prepares the horses and rides um, the owner's horses. That's her horse there, uh, Burlington Bertie, Burlington Bertie is who he's on. Yes. Um, and then that's Lewis's own horse there because he worked for... Um, um, I'm not Matthew at all, he works here. Matthew Dowsley, <laughs> um, uh, in his dress out stable and got the horse through there. So again, someone in a short time, passionate, driven, hard worker is following his passion. Olympians, as we've said, with the MDAs, James Patterson Robertson, actually just coming back to Australia, had lived in Holland for a long time, representative of, for, for Australia at the Olympics and WEG. Uh, Kelly, Hayley Kelly, who again was in Katrina's year, yes, horse dentist now has gone on. So this is just a little bit of an overview I'll rush through to give you an idea of what actually is out there. 
Uh, Murray Lampert, another graduate of ours, obviously an eventer, just moved from our area down to Whittlesea, Stones Throw Equestrian Centre is his new one. Been to Badminton and Burley, sold his horse under the clocks for a good sum of money. Don't let anyone tell you there's no money in horses if you sell a horse. Um, and yeah, again, a really great supporter of the college. Um, Kristen Harris has a marketing interest, so she's developed uh, works for Scone Equine in their marketing department. So again, it just shows you there are little different areas that we're um, looking at. Now, I, I'm aware that we've talked at you for quite a, a while, and I don't want to um, bombard you with too much. So we might see if there's anyone, um, if you have any questions. But otherwise, thank you so much for joining us here today. And I hope this was informative and that you enjoyed it and it's given you a little bit of fire in your belly and that you're a little bit motivated to maybe start the next step of your career wherever you're starting at now. So thank you very much and we'll look forward to hopefully seeing you in the future. So what we'll do now is maybe ask some of the questions. So what we might do, we've got a few chat questions that have come through. Katrina might read them out yep. and then we can maybe answer them because I think it's good if... if you know, everyone gets the answers because um, then it will save you asking the same question. It'd be fun if I had a little microphone. Yeah. <laughs> little well, room. I think you might have addressed this one actually. Can 30 year old people still enrol at Marcus Oldham College? Yes, you're young at 30. Yeah. It's, it's your attitude and motivation. And um, often, you know, by the time you're a bit older, you're really aware of what you, what you want and often you're more, you're more motivated because it hasn't been handed to you on a platter. So absolutely. Yes. Um, a facilities five star accommodation. So you've probably seen the photos and I hope that helped you a little bit. So, you know, we're a working yard. I mean, we're, we're not like Wallaby Hill or Bono if you look at those, we don't hire out, but we have fantastic indoor, we have the round yard, we have the stables, we have 500 acres, we have the show jump. So it's, it's pretty, it's everything that you'll need. Absolutely. Oh, safe and fencing. As far as the student accommodation and student accommodation about? yeah i mean so it's it's residential the halls of residence so they're private rooms i mean i wouldn't say they were like the taj mahal but they're um very functional you've got your own bed you've got a desk you've got a heater which can be very important in geelong <laughs> sometimes um you've got a wardrobe in there um they're they're immaculately clean most of our students aren't in their rooms that often just to do a bit of work is the only time it's very social out here um, the dining hall we've got, so it's a shared dining hall. Um, we've got a library, the Learning Resource Centre, which is open 24 hours access. So there's just a code there. We've got this brand new tech hub, which is what we're talking um, to you from, which is if you have a look on the website, you'll see that. So we're putting a lot of money into the infrastructure at the moment. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, it's a single bed that you'll be in, but big rooms, big windows, 500 acres in the middle of the country. Like it's absolutely bucolic and beautiful and peaceful here. Yeah. Great fun social life too. Um, can I do show jumping? It's Absolutely, <laughs> yep. So as we said, you follow your interest and your passion. Um, we support you in that. Um, with the college horses, if you don't have your own horse, we do have a number of college horses, mainly for interstate, international students. So we encourage you to bring your own horse if you can, because I think that's part of the fun to be here is to have that experience and work with that. But we do have a number of college horses at various levels that you can borrow too. Will Marcus Oldham help me start my business? Hopefully I we'll yep, we in depth. hope so. Um, that's what we're here for. I mean, we are a business management college and that's what the aim is. Um, question here about international students, which I think we also did touch on. Yes, you're welcome, basically. So we have students from all, we've had students from Canada, India, Singapore, Russia. Malaysia. <sighs> Malaysia, New Zealand, really <laughs> every country, the UK, Ireland. Yeah, absolutely. And it, we love it because it actually adds to the experience for all of us and the contacts that we make and the stories that you hear and the connections and their experiences that you can share. Yeah. Um, how does it work if I need to live off campus? So we do have people living off campus. That's absolutely fine. And sometimes if, you know, they've got families or they're already living close by, that's fine. You just need to realise there are commitments outside the normal nine to four. So we have duties that students will do to look after the, the college horses, the yearlings that we've got in, the weanlings we've got in. So about once every four weeks, there's a commitment between sort of seven and 8.30 to do duties. Weekends, there might be some commitments with the young horses as well that we've got. Um, or if there's a sick horse or something, then the, the students who live on campus are responsible. And if you live off campus, you might just need to drive in. It's not a problem. It's just that it, I wouldn't suggest you live too far away. We've had students who live 
45 minutes away and that's doable, but they're pretty motivated because, you know, sometimes you've got to drive in at six o'clock in the morning or come in on weekends. So, but it's absolutely fine. You can live off campus. That's no problem. It's just, you've got to think about the petrol money and things like that. And then obviously with that, you don't have any, um, you've only got the tuition fees to pay for. You don't have to pay any residential fees. So that's all on fee help then. Um, so on that actually, scholarships. There's a question about scholarships. Beautiful. Yeah. So with the scholarships, we actually have two coming up um, soon, um, August. So we've got a thoroughbred and equestrian scholarship, which are worth quite big bits of money, sort of 15000 11500 And then we have scholarships later in the year. So the scholarships, we always say apply. We'll, you know, the shortlist happens, but if you don't apply, you can't get it. What we're looking for in a scholarship and what our sponsors really, who have a lot of saying are looking for, is potential. We want good graduates. We want people that are going to be out there in industry. We want the people who are going to be ambassadors for the industry and for the, the sponsors of the scholarship as well. It's not, it's not necessarily on academic or the best writer. It's someone who we think is passionate and has that little bit of, you know, light from within. Um, you've obviously got to be someone who other students will understand why you've, you've won the scholarship. You know, you need to turn up on time. You need to be a good work. You need to be a good role model. You know, you, you need a bit of leadership. That doesn't mean that always the most confident people get it because often those people that leave quietly from behind and are just really good workers and just turn up every day, they're the ones that people want in industry, you know, the nice, quiet achievers. So I always say, please, if you're considering it, please apply for the scholarship, definitely. Yes. And when to apply, that ties in nicely. When to apply and a fee help question. There. So apply, you can apply any time in the year. The only thing we find at Mark is what happens if you want to live in, the accommodation does fill up because they've only got a set amount of rooms, obviously. So if you're pretty keen that you want to come in the following year, I suggest that you put an application in any time. We then do an interview, either over the phone or maybe coming in, depending what restrictions are on. But you know, we like people to come in when and if they can. Um, then post the interview, if we ring your referees, we think everything's good and we think the course is right for you and you're ready for it, then we would send you an offer. And often it's a good idea if you're pretty committed that you wanna come in the next year or two, if you accept the offer. And then it guarantees you a room and a place for your horse, okay? And, and, and also a college horse if you need that. Because what tends to fill up is the, um, physical facilities okay the courses we can be a bit more flexible with um, so that's that would be the step put an application in we have an interview and then we go from there and you can accept fee help so basically the course is um, just like with university for hex you might have heard about the course you put all your tuition so roughly thirty three thousand dollars um, thirty three to thirty five thousand is fee help and you can put that on fee help, it's a 25% loading on that. And then you pay that back for your tax system once you're gainfully employed in the industry. So it just comes out of your way, just like when I went to uni, mine just comes out of my wage, you don't notice it. Then the other side is the um, residential and the accommodation side, and that covers. So that covers everything. You have no out of pocket expenses in the sense of when you're here, all your meals are covered, adjustment for one horse and hay, a college horse if you need to borrow, that's covered. Your trip to New Zealand is covered. The only thing you need to think about is obviously your own petrol money. If you've got a horse, the shoeing and the feeding of your own horse and your social life. So if you're really social, you might need a bit more money. If you're just sort of not too social and just want to ride and focus on your course, then that's probably fine. The only other thing is obviously when you're a work placement, you may have to think about covering your own meals there. It just depends. A lot of places will feed you. Depends where you go and how they work it and work it out. But basically, we, we say do not let money put you off. Okay, because there's a way to get here. Fee help will cover a lot of that. You've got youth allowance and off study, which will cover a lot of your accommodation. You probably need to find about $5,000. We have bursaries, we have scholarships, we have Marcus Assist, which helps with your fees in a payment plan. We never want someone who's passionate to let money stop them. Didn't stop Ryan I know with $10,000 to buy a property. It didn't stop um, Monique, you know, having to start her own property. So don't let that put you off. There's always a way if you're passionate. We want you here. Yep. Okay, just a couple more questions what here. What else have we got? How much of the day is spent with my horse? So class time is nine till four, uh, except Wednesdays are sport afternoons. So that's when you can ride. So you can ride before that. So you can ride in the morning, you can ride at lunchtime, you can ride in the afternoons. Obviously when there's practical sessions, the riding, 
then you'll be riding with your horse, you know, an hour a day as well. So your horses are just here out the door. Yeah. Um, but you, you are in class nine to four most days because you do get a lot of contact hours. Uh, we've got a lot to teach you. We've got a lot to squeeze into your little brains there. Uh, how does the application process work? So the best thing to do is on the website, you'll find a link to the um, application form. So you can fill that out and um, just email it back to us. And then once you put an application in, then we set up an interview time and have a chat with you. But the first thing is, if you have any trouble, just give us a call. We're always here. We're happy to speak to you and help. We're not a big institution. We're quite small. Everyone knows what's going on. So if you're having a trouble, but otherwise just go onto the website and fill the application form out and submit it. And then that starts the ball rolling. And that probably covers this next question. Um, if I'm in year 12 this year, when do I apply? So you can apply now and you can apply when you're in year 11 as well. So the requirements are that you do need to be 18. You are looking at having uh, year 12. However, we do have graduates that some of our best graduates didn't do year 12, but they've had maybe a year out or some experience or there was a reason. We just want you to be ready because it is an academic course. There's a lot of support though small class sizes, access to teachers. Our doors, the lecturer's doors are open all the time. We're not like a big university or even a school. You, I mean, you've got to be motivated. It's a bit like uni in the sense that you chose to come here, you're paying for it, it's your responsibility. But we are here to help. If you ask for our help, we will help you. So um, ideally, you know, year 12 is the, is the easy process, but don't let that put you off. We have discussions with people all the time and work out other pathways or what may or may not, not suit. Um, but, you know, the more motivated you are, the easier it'll be. But we are here to help you because we are small. We're very boutique. We're very open. Like we see the students, I mean, I'm up at the stables, Katrina up there all the time. You know, there's casual ways to talk to us. It doesn't have to be formal. We've got a learning That's support right. person. Um, it's a very friendly environment when you're at Marcus. Yep. And I think the lucky last question, in the application process, who should we use for the referees? So you can use anyone. I suggest you, you don't use your mum or your dad or anyone. Yeah, it needs to be someone who maybe you, you, yeah, who maybe isn't. They might give you a bad reference too. You better be careful. Um, I would put down maybe if you're at school, maybe if you're an equine coordinator or one of your teachers or something would be great. If you've ever worked for anyone, your riding coach, anyone you've done some work experience for. If you've got someone in the industry, that would be great to have someone um, – who knows you with the horses, but if not, just anyone that knows in a capacity where you've shown that, you know, you, you're motivated, I suppose. Actually, there's one more that just popped up. I mean, year 11, can I apply for early entry? You can apply, but we would ask you to do year 12. I think that's what you're asking. So you can apply now. We will accept you on the condition that you've done year 12 or whatever other option we might discuss with you. So we will send you conditional offers if you want to apply early. Absolutely. And it's not a bad thing because often it, it does motivate you to get through your year 12. Uh, yeah, Lewis, something to work Yeah, for. Lewis is one of those. He actually left school in year 11. He went back to year 12 after a year out because he wanted to come to Marcus and thought he wanted to do year 12 again. So that really motivated him to keep going. That was the guy who won the Marcus Oldham Challenge. Okay. So it looks like there That's... most of the chat questions done. Yep. If anyone has anything they want to ask or speak to us about, then please feel free to mute yourself maybe one at a time if you need to. Oh, here's one more question. Do we need any specific subjects at school? No, not really, because what we do is very um, horse ride in general. Look, if you've done business studies, if you've done some biology or something, that can help. But there's nothing that you have to have done because we sort of start you a bit from ground zero because we're putting it into a context of the equine industry. Um, I do have a question. Yep. Uh, so with my ATAR, when I did do year 12, I actually didn't get my ATAR points for some reason. I couldn't get into it. I don't know why. It just wouldn't let me. Um, I wanted to do, I don't know what happened. I tried. Um, but I was going to work in the industry in Griffith, which is the town I live in. Yep. We actually don't have a large horse industry, which we had like one thoroughbred stable, which I worked in for yep. year 11 or year 12. But other than that, we don't have much experience we can go through. What is an option there? So um, ATAR, does, we don't actually have a cutoff for ATAR. We actually interview every person on, a, on an individual merit basis because often we find it's personality and motivation that's more important. So don't worry about the ATAR. Mm -hmm. Um, in relation to getting the work experience, it depends. If you've done a little bit of work, you might want to come straight to Marcus Oldham. 
And that's how you start your experience because you can do the work placement when you're with us and you can do that as we said, anywhere in Australia or the world while you're here and living on campus and not having to live at home. Otherwise we can, if you did want to have um, a bit more experience before you came here, we can put you in touch with people that might be willing to, to give you a year's experience and living, you know, living off site, um, or, or sorry, away from home and living on site with them. But look, if you've done a little bit of work and you think that's what you want to do, then probably coming to Marcus would be the next step yeah. to, towards your um, work experience, I would say. Yep. Um, one other question. I do have a two and a half year old. She's almost three. If I wanted to come and let's say if for the breaking in part, am I allowed to bring her to break in and do that? Oh, with so not, you not a daughter. Yeah. I was thinking, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. 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 Yeah, no, you can. Yep. Yeah. We, we'll, we often <laughs> student horses. You just got to be aware if you, if, if that is the case, that other students will be part of that process as well. Yep. Um, so if you're happy to do that, we are more than happy. Yeah. Anyone else out there in the IT land? Well, I think that sounds like we've given you a bit of time to ask questions. We've had some great questions. Thank you for those to um, prompt us to talk about some of those things. Um, I hope you found this um, informative and enjoyable and motivating. I'm hoping you're all really excited about your future career in the equine industry because we're excited by it as well. Please be in touch if you have any questions. Anyone here, whether it's um, the marketing department or student services or Katrina or myself can answer your questions or they'll put you in touch with the right person to answer that. We're, we're here, you know, all the time. So anytime, email or phone us if you prefer to have a one-to-one -one chat or something, might be easier. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and good luck with everything that's going on at the moment. And I hope you all get through um, COVID and we look forward to seeing you, some of you, for the scholarship interviews and hopefully next year. So I think that'll be us signing off. So please be in touch and adios. Go and ride your horses. <laughs>